Hello dear students and welcome to new video of PVN Science Study. This is the second part of rickshaw video. In this video we will study the two types of reproduction in rickshaw. One is vegetative reproduction and the second one is sexual reproduction one by one. In rickshaw the vegetative reproduction takes place by four methods. One is fragmentation, second is formation of adventitious branches. Third is tubers and fourth is persistent apices. So the first method is fragmentation. Dear friends, here you can see the steps of fragmentation. Fragmentation is the common method of reproduction. The cells of older parts of the plant die due to the old age. So here you can see the decayed portion of the thallus. When death and disintegration of the old part reaches dichotomy, the lobes of the plants get separated. And this is the new fragmented thallus and each fragment later on develops into the new thallus of the rickshaw. So this process is known as the fragmentation which is the first vegetative reproduction type. Then the second vegetative reproduction type is adventitious branches. So here you can see the figure which is showing the adventitious branches. In aquatic species of rickshaw that is the rickshaw flutens. Adventitious branches develop from the ventral surface of the thallus in the midrib region. The death and decay of the connecting tissue detach the adventitious branches from the parent plant. And later on, these adventitious branches which are detached develop into the new rickshaw thallus. Then the third vegetative reproduction, it is the tubers. So here you can see the tubers. As the unfavorable season approaches, the apices of the sun species of the rickshaw store food material and become thick to form tubers. These tubers, these are the perinating organs, which means they can survive in the unfavorable condition also. In unfavorable condition, the total rickshaw plant perishes, but the tubers remain alive but dormant. On the return of favorable season, the tuber germinate to form new plant. And the fourth and the last vegetative reproduction type, it is the persistent apices. In many species of the rickshaw which grow in the regions having the prolonged dry season, the entire plant except the growing apices of the thallus perishes. These persistent apices of the thallus lobes grow downward into the soil. On the return of favorable period, the apices grow into the new individual of the rickshaw. So with this we have completed the four different type of vegetative reproductions developed by rickshaw. Dear friends, now we will study the sexual reproduction in rickshaw. Sexual reproduction in rickshaw is oogamous. It takes place by formation of well developed multicellular jacketed sex organ. In most of the species of rickshaw, the male and female sex organs are developed on the same thallus. And so the species of rickshaw, they are considered as monoecious or homothallic. Two types of sex organs are produced in rickshaw. The male sex organ is known as antridia and the female sex organ is known as archegonia. Dear friends, now we will see where these sex organs are produced on the rickshaw thallus. Both the sex organs are formed singly on the dorsal surface here and are deeply sunken in the middle groove of the thallus. They are enclosed in their respective cavities due to the vigorous growth of the surrounding vegetative tissue. In the monoecious species, the antheridae are formed before the archegonia. And this condition it is known as the proteinary condition. This proteinary condition helps the rickshaw plant to avoid the self-fertilization. Both the sex organs are formed in the acropetal succession. That is, the younger ones towards the apex and older they are at the base. Dear friends, now we will study the structure of male sex organ that is antheridia in rickshaw. The mature antheridium is a multicellular and elongated structure enclosed in an antheridial cavity present on the dorsal surface. It consists of stalk as well as body. As you can see here, this is the stalk and this is the body of the antheridium. The stalk is multicellular and attaches the antheridium to the base of the cavity. This is the body of antheridium which is ovoid or pear shaped and this is the outermost sterile jacket layer of the antheridium. 
It is also called as anthradial wall. This jacket layer, it is one cell in thickness and it is protective in nature. Inside the jacket layer, we can see a mass of fertile cubical cells called as androcyte mother cells. Each androcyte mother cell divides diagonally to form two androcytes or the spermatid. Dear friend, here you can see the structure of spermatid or the spermatozoid of Rixia, which is also known as anthrozoid. This spermatozoid or anthrozoid of Rixia mainly contains three parts. This is vesicle, this is body, and these are the two flagella. Numerous anthrozoids or the spermatozoids are formed in an anthridium. Each anthridium is a minute, slender, curved, and flagellated structure. As you can see here, flagella, they are two in number. Flagella are inserted at the anterior end. The body possesses elongated cytoplasm and the unusual cytoplasm attached to the posterior end forming the vesicle. So this is the vesicle. Dear students, here you can see the actual photograph of Rixia anthridium and this is the diagram or the sketch. After completion of the study of anthridia, now we will study the archegonia, which is the female sex organ in Rixia. This is VS of thallus showing archegonium. The archegonium is flask shaped structure lies within a cavity called as archegonial cavity. The archegonium is differentiated it into mainly three parts that is stalk, venter and neck. The stalk is small and fused. At maturity, it can hardly be distinguished from the neighboring gametophytic tissue and hence it often appears to be the sessile. And so therefore, it is looking like that venter is directly attached to the base of the archegonial chamber. Then this is venter. Venter is broad and has a venter wall or jacket which is one cell in thickness. The venter encloses a cavity and this cavity is known as the venter cavity in which two unequal cells are present. The upper small cell is known as venter canal cell and the lower larger cell is known as egg cell. Then this is the neck region of the archegonium of Rixia. The neck consists of a vertical row of four neck canal cells. Dear friends, here you can measure it. This is first, second, third and fourth row. This neck is surrounded by a wall or jacket made up of six vertical rows of cells. Each is six to nine cells in height. At the tip of the neck, four specialized cells are present and they are called as cover cells. Another name to these cover cells is the cap cells or the lead cells. The jacket of the neck is continuous with the jacket of the venter. The venter of the archegonium it is embedded within the gametophytic tissue, but the neck is projects above the surface of the thallus. This is for the sake of fertilization. Here you can see the actual photograph where we can distinguish venter, egg cell as well as the neck canal cells. This is also the photograph of the slide where we can see the structure of archegonia of Rixia. Now, let's talk about the fertilization in Rixia. Presence of water or at least moisture is necessary for the dehiscence sense of the sex organs. First of all, we will see that how the dehiscence sense of anthridia takes place. In mature anthridium, the walls of spermatids are dissolved, leaving the spermatozoids free inside the anthridium in a gelatinous fluid. The water finds its way to the anthridial cavity through the ostiole of the cavity. The apical cells of the jacket of the anthridium imbibe water due to the absorption of water by the anthridial wall. The cells, they exert pressure. The wall of anthridium bursts, liberating many spermatozoids and by this way, the spermatozoids, they are liberated outside the anthridium. Now, let's see what happens with the archegonia in the fertilization. When the archegonium reaches maturity, the ventral canal cell as well as the neck canal cells, they disintegrate and degenerate to form the mucilage. The mucilage absorbs water and create a pressure on the wall separating the lead cells or the cover cells. This creates a passageway 
for the sponge to reach the egg cell. Now we will see the actual fertilization process. So this is the archegonium and after degeneration of winter canal cell as well as neck canal cells, it is converted into mucilage. This is the mucilage. This mucilage contains certain chemical substances like the soluble proteins and inorganic salts of potassium. Due to presence of these chemicals, these chemicals or the mucilage attract the spermatozoids and this phenomena is known as chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is the phenomena in which the male gametes that are attracted towards the female gamete due to the influence of the chemicals which are present inside the mucilage or inside the archegonium. Many spermatozoids which are swimming outside the archegonium, they are coming towards this mucilage and they are also getting entry inside the archegonium. Though many anterozoids they are entering the archegonium but only one of them succeeds to uniting with the egg to form the zygote. So this is the egg which is considered as female gamete and this is the spermatozoid or the anterozoid which is considered as the male gamete and the union of this male gamete with this female gamete it is known as fertilization. The end product of the fertilization it is the zygote and this is the first cell of the sporophytic generation. The zygote is embedded in the venter. The venter with the part of the neck forms the calyptra which is two layer. Dear friend, with this we have studied the reproduction as well as the fertilization process in rickshia. In next part we will study the sporophyte structure as well as the life cycle of rickshia. All the best for your study.